Hey everybody, Kevin here from Humble Craftworks. Welcome back to another episode of Woodworking with Mr. Kevin. That's me. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about how not to build a cabinet. What? Never build cabinets like this. Really? Never. It'll lead to heartache. It'll lead you to a loss of money and time. It'll make you feel like a dummy. Your customers will think you're stupid. And uh, you're gonna have to start all over again because you built your cabinet just like this. And I'm gonna show you how not to build your cabinet just like this in today's video. So you may see this ginormous pine box that I'm sitting inside of right here. This is a cabinet that's built from floor to ceiling and it's only 12 inches wide. But there's one problem with this big cabinet. Comment below if you think you know what it is. I've seen this happen dozens and dozens of times over the last 25 years of doing construction and being a contractor where you go to install something, you bring it in the house, it's kind of big and awkward, and you go to put it in place and it doesn't fit. Don't. I made a little sample of what the problem is right here. This cabinet is going to be uh, eight feet tall. The ceiling is eight foot one inch. There's crown molding and there's floor molding on it. This is where two bifold doors go. I'm sitting where the uh, solar panel array controller is. It all has to be put on the wall and go floor to ceiling. We're gonna run crown molding around the top to match everything else. But there's uh, one huge problem. <coughs> and I'm going to show you right now what the problem is so you don't do it. And I'll explain how I go about building this cabinet here and the one that's attached to it so I can actually install it on site. And I made uh, a mock-up of it right here. So this piece here represents this cabinet. This is it laying on its back and you're gonna lift it up. What the hell? This eight foot one ceiling, eight foot long cabinet. Boom. You hit the ceiling. You can't install this thing no matter what you do. You've drove it all the way over there to install it and you put it in the room and you gotta lift it up and this is what you do. Oh crap, I hit the ceiling. Uh, now what do you do, smarty pants? Well, I'm gonna show you in today's video. Hopefully by the end of this video, you won't do what has been done hundreds of times by hundreds of contractors, because when you go to lay something down, even though it's only a foot wide, you're not gonna get it in because it's gonna hit the ceiling because it grows like five or six inches. It all depends on how wide it is too. The wider it is, the worse it is. So this could be seven feet tall and a 24 inch normal size cabinet. You go to tilt it up, it's gonna hit the ceiling. When you go to install something, you go to build something, measure the ceiling height, think about what you're building, measure corner to corner. If I have to tilt this up in a place, how big is it actually gonna be? We have this piece of dug fir. It's 16 and a half by 18 and a half. What happens when we do this? How tall do you think this is now from floor to ceiling? It's 24 and a half inches, and it's only 16 inches wide. This grew by six inches. Oh my yeah, that sounded kind of weird. And I've seen this happen time and time again. Oh, it's only, you know, 16 inches wide, and they flip it up on end, and it grows, it hits the ceiling. We have this one here. Let's see what this is. 23 and a half, 22 and a half. This is like a normal size cabinet. And if you have to tilt it up, what do you think that is? That's 32 and a half inches. When we raise it up from point to point, it grows by 10 inches. Nice. I know the ladies would be all happy to hear that one, but there it is, 10 inches taller. And that wouldn't matter if this thing was, uh, you know, eight feet tall, 10 feet tall. You raise this cabinet up to install it, or you know, it's laying flat on its back and you go to tilt it up, it's gonna raise up 10 inches. Just like this little guy right here, and you go to tilt it up, wouldn't matter if it's eight or 10 feet tall, it's gonna get six inches taller. Sometimes even if the toe kicks four inches and you have to tilt the damn thing back to get it in, and you think that toe kick's gonna save you, measure corner to corner, because a lot of the times it won't. Especially if it's a 24 inch deep cabinet. When you go to tilt that thing up, it's gonna hit the ceiling. <laughs> that ain't no good. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna finish building this, and as I'm taking it apart, I'm gonna explain to you and show you how I went about building it. It's all put together with pocket screws and dominoes. Oh, I'll put a couple pictures right here. So everything's got cleats on it that are gonna come off. Dominoed and pocket screwed into place here. Mm -hmm. Same thing down here. The only thing that's gonna be in one piece is the face frames on both sides and we're gonna actually build this in place after I built it here. I'm gonna take it all apart, finish it all, take it into the building itself, and basically assemble it piece by piece. And hopefully you will not do what hundreds of other people have done, and you won't look silly in front of your clients. But oh yeah, I know what I'm doing, doesn't it look great? And you go to put it in, you hit the ceiling, and you can't take it apart because it's one piece like this ginormous thing is. Oh, what's going on here? <laughs> uh. I think this channel just hit 1,000 subscribers. Really? Hold on. A few huh. moments later. It says we hit 1,000. <gasps> Woo! All right, very cool. Thanks, everybody. All right, very cool. So we hit 1,000. Yay! All right, we're going to talk about how to uh, build mm -hmm. cabinets that go floor to ceiling that you can actually install without doing this. Mm -hmm. And we got 1,000 subscribers now. Nice! Whee! I'll become a millionaire now. I'll make $4 a month from YouTube's. Yay! Oh, boy. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you in a minute. 
So the first thing that's really wrong with this cabinet is it's made out of pine. Mm -hmm. This is the second pine job I've done in 25 years. I built a kitchen not too long ago. I'll put pictures of it over here where the entire oh kitchen was goodness. naughty pine with brushed out to finish on it. Blech. And if you're just starting out in woodworking, and you're like, oh, pine's cheap, I'll buy pine. Uh, it's gonna be a little frustrating for you. Pine is full of knots, uh, which fly out and hit you in the head, so wear a face shield if you're gonna mill pine. And the other thing, it's full of timber bind. So when you go to cut your pine or whatever, it's either the wood's gonna start separating after you cut it, or it's gonna pinch against itself, or it's gonna go up and down and do all sorts of things. Because these pine boards are usually the center of the tree, and if you look at the rings, you'll see them. Some of the growth rings are huge. It's more of a pain in the ass to work with pine than if you just found yourself some poplar. Uh, so you can find some place that has poplar. I suggest doing that. It's harder and uh, it mills easier. Yeah, that's enough of me complaining about pine. Uh, let's get to this and I'll show you how it's built. All right, here we go. So you can see this cabinet is quite large, uh, eight foot tall, 80 inches wide. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna build the doors. I'm gonna show you the simplest way to make a door on a table saw and just a table saw. Then we're gonna build some shelves and I'm gonna show you how I make the shelves because these shelves are 36 inches long and they need a little support in front, like a little piece of trim like this, just to help keep the shelves flat. Pine is wavy and it's cupped and bowed and twisted and uh, by putting a piece of wood on the front, it'll stiffen it up so it won't sag. Plus it'll get some of that twist out of it because I could. If one piece goes like this, I can make the other piece go like that, and I can stick them together and they can fight with each other and hopefully they'll uh, straighten themselves out. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna start milling the doors. I'll film that so you can actually see the easiest way to make the simplest door in the entire world. I gotta mill some paneling first and then I'll turn you back on. We're gonna make some of the easiest doors known to man. So we have some scrap wood here that we're gonna use to uh, get the dado set for the panel for the uh, doors. We have to set this Wixie. This is another Wixie I have. Beautiful for setting all this up except for one problem. You can never read the damn thing. I got my, my special light right here so I can actually see what that says. We're gonna hold this down even though it's magnetic and we're gonna raise this up. And what we're going for is 5 16ths. I should say 3.125. Okay, so we wound it up and it says 3.13. And that's good enough. Now we're gonna set our saw to one quarter of an inch. This is three quarters of an inch. We want a quarter inch reveal here in the front and we wanna make our panel the exact thickness. All right, so we have a piece of this paneling right here. It's 3 16ths. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our piece here. We're just gonna come in slightly. So I'm gonna barely go over this way, a quarter of an inch plus a smidge. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and run it once, I'm gonna flip it around, I'm gonna run it again, and we'll see if it fits. Okay, it works perfectly. We can just rip the rails like they're going out of style because the rails, we can go all the way through. These are the four styles. So we have everything labeled the way we want it so we know where to put the damn dado. What we have to do to these styles is what I call a drop cut. And I think I've made a video of this before. I'm just gonna show one of these doors. We have the blade marked with a square. Hear it? And I drew a line. That's my stop mark. The start mark's over here. It's a start mark, and it's gonna do the same thing. Just where it comes up, you're gonna put a line. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically take this hunk of wood, and on the start mark, we're gonna drop it in, and we're gonna run it until we hit the stop mark where we put a line, and we're gonna lift it up. I'm gonna flip it around and do the exact same thing to both sides, which will be the same as doing these rails, and we'll be done. Uh, if you want to, and you're not comfortable doing a drop cut, uh, you can do a spline at the very end. So you can actually just run them all, just like I'm gonna run these rails, just all boop, run one side, I'm gonna flip it around, run the other side, and you can make a quarter inch spline that'll fit in there nicely that you can just tap in the end, and when you go to glue it up, you can just fill it with uh, basically a square plug. And that way you don't need a domino machine or anything else. So we have an X for the side we wanna cut, like this, so all the X's are facing down. I know this square's an inch thick, so I'm gonna come in from the very top an inch, I'm gonna put a line, and when I start, I can see where I need to go from the top, and I'm just gonna drop it down right on top there. Okay, I took a picture of it, put it up uh, over here, and I just drop it down on there and I run it through, and when I hit the other line, I just pull it up. If you've never done this before, I wouldn't recommend it for your uh, first time out doing woodworking because uh, it's kind of dangerous. What I would do if I was you is start by lowering the blade down to like a 16th of an inch so it doesn't grab you because sometimes if you're not holding on to this hand good enough and you drop these down, this will shoot back and uh, hit you in the gut. So start with a 16th of an inch. This blade's set at 5 sixteenths and I still really cautious. I'm really holding on with this hand here and dropping it down on the line, pulling it and lifting it. And I'm gonna do that uh, eight times over here. I'm gonna get set up here and uh, I'll time lapse this whole thing. All 
There it is, fits. All right, now we just gotta mill the panels up and glue everything together. So what we're gonna do is domino the ends here. And uh, you can see that end there, and this is gonna get dominoed in like this. You know, super simple, super easy to do. That literally took me two and a half minutes. Uh, all the pieces are made. It's the world's simplest, easiest door to machine, just using your table saw. You could do the exact same thing if you have a contractor saw, if you have an eighth inch blade. If you don't, you just make more passes, that's it. Man. Squeaker says it beats buying a router table or a shaper to make your doors. You just use your damn table saw. And another tip, if you can, get yourself a milling blade, like this one's square, an uh, eighth inch Freud uh, rip blade. It's completely square and it makes perfectly square cuts at the very end. You see that? Uh, but right there, see how square that is? Perfectly square. It's great for dadoing because uh, setting up a dado stack on a saw stop is stupid. You just do this, it's faster. Two minutes and you're done. Boop, two doors, two minutes. Ta-da, all right. The next time I'll see you guys, we're gonna be making the little shelves that go right in here. I'll see you in about two seconds, one and two. All right, so today I'm gonna to show you how to build the, the world's easiest adjustable shelf with trim on it. Sanded up everything yesterday, ready to go. What we're looking for now is uh, if the pine goes like this, it's kind of got the arch to it, you want it to arch up, so it'll sag with time hopefully and straighten out. We're gonna put our uh, piece of trim on there. It's been sanded on all four sides. We're just basically gonna line everything up and put dominoes in this. Before we do all that, we're gonna bevel these two edges. It just makes it look better. I know it collects dust a little bit, but if your shelf and your trim are off a little bit because the dominoes don't line up perfectly every time because it's pine, this is the best way to hide something like that. I'm gonna do the same thing to both sides of the cabinet uh, where the face frame attaches to the side. We're just gonna V-groove it. And I know they make V-groove bits, but I just prefer to take a little 45 degree chamfer bit, right? Put it in my 9,000 year old router and uh, do it this way. Because uh, like for the cabinet, I don't have to sit there and try to ride down the cabinet face frame. I can just zip it. <laughs> Super simple to do, just this little tiny thing. It's just easier. All right, now we're gonna put in five by 30 dominoes. Here we go. Do this with the uh, biscuit joiner if you want. You can put uh, you know number twenties in there, tens. I used to put biscuits in here. That's one when I that's all I had. Didn't have a domino machine because it's the price of a small vehicle. Well, maybe not anymore, but uh, it used to be. All right, so let's see if I can get this on here. It's definitely bowed, so I got to bend this in. It's complaining. There we go. Did you hear it? <laughs> I don't like it. Make it stop. There it is. Just that simple, that easy to do. Put a little glue in there, pop that thing on just like that. That's all I do to every single shelf I have. Usually they're not solid wood and they're definitely ne never pine. For me, I have a pre-finished maple that I use. Usually whatever the face frame is and the doors, I put the same you know, hardwood trim on the front of the shelf. This is just to stiffen this up because pine has a tendency to sag because it's really soft. That little extra inch and a quarter will uh, hopefully get rid of that. And if I have some that are bowed, which I do, uh, hopefully I can straighten it out. You can see that's pretty straight now, so. All right, everybody, I'm gonna continue on and I will see you in a couple hours. All right, the sun came out. Woohoo! The sun came out and your cabinet is built. And the hardest part was putting this damn board and bead in the back because this thing's kind of floppy. It almost fell over once. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. So this whole entire thing is uh, 80 by 96. It's got three sides, two face frames, which is this, this section here. And this whole entire section here is a separate face frame. This side over here has five cleats. This side over here has five cleats. These cleats are put on from the back. The cleats that are in here are gonna be put on from the front. So the pocket screws are actually gonna be visible just like this one here because I have plumbing to go around and I gotta miss that solar array, whatever the hell that thing is. I don't know what it is. And there's electrical down below and all that. So I'm gonna, the way this is gonna be built is I'm gonna do this section first. We'll pocket screw all the pieces and parts on and domino these sides to this face frame. And we'll have it just sitting up there by itself because I can tilt up the face frame and shim it to the ceiling while I'm attaching these sides, which I'm just gonna come up like this and put them in place and then domino them in place, clamp them and glue them up. And then I'm gonna start on this side. So once we get the right side all assembled, we're gonna attach it to the left side. And I'm gonna slide everything into place, put it where it wants to be, and then uh, I'll attach these cleats back here, and then we'll screw it to the studs, screw this side to the studs, and we'll run the crown and we'll be done. The easiest thing to do is just make it so it all breaks down, it all comes apart. It's just like building a normal cabinet, except you don't glue anything until after you're there and you install it. It is a little easier to finish because all you have to do is 
take the separate part and put finish on it and spray it and you're done. You don't have to like sand inside the cabinet and go up here and spray and down here and spray. It's easier to do because it's all on your bench. Just like those pre-finished cabinets that I, uh, there's a video over here about pre-finished cabinets. It's kind of the same thing. You build it, you take it apart, you finish it and you put it back together, but you do it on site and that's it. Label everything, that's another thing. Make sure you label your parts so you don't get, what, where does this go? I don't know where this goes. It doesn't have a label on it. Make sure you label all your parts. That's super important. And if I can, I'll sneak in uh, my GoPro and I'll put up a couple of lights and I'll put a time lapse on it. And you'll see, see me building this at the very end of this video, hopefully. All right, everybody, if you have any questions or comments, please do sub below and I'll see you in a minute. All right, everybody, you ready? We're gonna install this cabinet. All right. This is a beautiful little cabin out in the middle of nowhere. I put some pictures of it up over here. And I'm just gonna time lapse all this, put music to it. Hopefully the, this will last, because it says it's only good for like an hour. Oh, got a little problem down here. I got a cleat. I gotta take that damn cleat off. Because it's three quarters of an inch, making it higher than it's supposed to be. dust off the floor. Does I have an hour left? I better hurry up. Okay, now we're gonna do the other side. Box, screw the interior of this side onto this face frame here uh, so I don't have to have these clamps on here so they can fall off. The Raven says uh, the next thing we need to do is attach a face frame part to that one side and glue it up and clamp it because we can't pocket screw it like we did this side right here. And there it is. We took the clamps off the uh, right side, side. <laughs> and now we're gonna try to attempt to put the face ring parts and the cleats on and attach it to the left side here. tomorrow we've got probably five hours in it today you saw me try to get the crown off that was kind of a pain in the butt same with the floor molding uh, when you don't have the right tools it makes it harder <laughs> that's my fault anyway so tomorrow we're gonna hang the bifold doors gonna run the crown I'm gonna cope it around hopefully and fit it into there we're gonna cock all of that into place and it'll be done Hi right, everybody we're done and there should be crowns on Bifold doors are in. It's all screwed to the wall. It's cut in place. We're done. Floor to ceiling cabinet built in place the way they all should be. That's it. We are on to the next job. All right. Thanks for watching. And thanks for subscribing to this channel. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, you have an awesome day. Bye. <laughs> Subscribe now. All right, start over. So when you're building cabinets, <sighs> so if you're new to woodworking, here, let's see, hold on. Oh, I feel better. Oh man.
this thing. Whoo! Okay, whoo! It's an L. Or a uh, seven. Man, that's... We've conquered again. Damn thing. Can we start over? <laughs>